Well, that should be fun. So, waking up. Well, here's our pointer. So this is, this is my slide set from <clears throat> a lecture last week as clinical assistant professor of integrative medicine, thanks to Dr. Rothenberg's recommendation. I now get to give lectures with Paul Greengard at Cornell Medical School, who's a Nobel Prize winner. So I started out the lecture, and I said, you're a bunch of neurosurgeons, and uh, I'm not exactly a brain surgeon. And I said, Did, how many of you saw in science that the human brain, with three pounds, burns 25 to 50 percent of the calories? So here are a bunch of brain surgeons, and how many saw that? How many of you saw that? Science, you saw it? And did you see it said 16 to 25 percent of the oxygen of the entire body goes to your brain. And many of you say, think it's obvious that the brain is the most important organ, but we don't relate it to our number one health problem, which is obesity. PAs and doctors who've worked with me for seven years continually forget that they should start their day with every patient, and you should too, with the following four issues that will predict longevity. They are, is your brain cooking, meaning are you thin? Is your metabolism amazing? So some of you balanced your hormones, but are you thin and fit? Is your muscle mass 18, 16%? is your, are you of the right height and weight? All right, that relates to your dopamine metabolism. Uh, it's not obvious if a group of neurosurgeons spend their entire life in the brain or oblivious that the brain is burning 40, 25 to 50%, I think 40% of the calories. Number two, your note, everybody's note in the future of medicine will say thin, fit or not, brain, high voltage or not. Next part of your note is, are you cognitively enhanced? What do you mean by cognitively enhanced? Not only is your memory great, your attention great, but you're not distracted by axis one or axis two uh, serious disorders. What I mean by that, generalized anxiety disorder, sleep disorders, uh, dysthymic, which is a chronic set of blues. Um, borderline personality, hysterical personalities, people that spend their life, emotionality, high emotionality, aggressive personalities, people spending their time fighting, that don't understand that those brain chemical behaviors destroy your cognitive ability to reach your peak. And ultimately, without you balancing your brain mood, personality, your cognition is damaged and you will not be able to continue learning into your 70s, 80s, and hopefully into your centenarian years. Who's hoping for centenarian years here? I'm hoping for some good centenarian years, a couple hundred years. So now I spoke to these genius group of neurosurgeons and I asked, how many of you do a memory scale prior to your neurosurgery? How many did it? Zip. Right. They told me, well, my insurance is 135000 What the hell I want to prove to my patient that he can't remember anything after I've operated on him? Seriously. That's the comment I got. So everyone says, yeah, I know my brain's more important than my rectum, and that's why I do a brain checkup before a colonoscopy. I know my brains are more important than my breasts. That's why everyone in this room who has breasts has done just as many brain checkups as she's done breasts. Who's done more brain checkups than breast exams as a woman here? So we give a lot of lip service to, to sometimes our best ideas. You know, it's like sort of like, I love you, but I haven't spent any time with my kids or my family, or I love you, but I don't give any rewards to people I work with. We're all filled with paradoxes. There's probably not a person here, a man here, that spent as much time on his brain health as he has on his erections. And there's not a man, woman here who spend as much time on their brain health as they have on their cervix and their vagina. Therefore, with all due respect, it'll be written in the history books about this generation having lost its head and spent most of its time inside of its sex organs. Next is, the third most important thing is, how many of you really know 
are willing to treat your anxiety, depression, and insomnia, how many of you really understand that virtually everyone getting older is getting some degree of chronic anxiety disorder or chronic blues disorder? That if you open up the Kaplan Sadoc textbook of psychiatry, it will say that, uh, that all antidepressants, virtually all, function as brain preservatives or brain salts to sustain your neurotransmitters. The majority of people that get older can't sustain their mood, their anxiety, their, their stability, and they can benefit from brain salts, not just the precursors like tyrosine and phenylalanine and tryptophan, not just the neurosteroids like testosterone and estrogen that work as neurosteroids, but they actually need brain preservatives so that they can have the same output at 70 that they do at 50. Most people don't even think much about these medicines, which are the most valuable possibly in all of modern medicine. How many of you have thought to yourselves when you give Cymbalta for neuropathy, did that diabetic have depression in his foot? Oh yeah, he had a depressed foot. The foot called him up on the phone like a Maxwell Smart and a shoe phone called him and said, I'm really blue lately and my toes are hurting me, so please give me an antidepressant. So how the hell does an antidepressant treat toe pain? All right, how does an antidepressant treat toe pain? Well, it teaches you something very important, that the brain is the organ that's throughout the entire body, through the spinal cord, and a holistic organizer. Or if you want to summarize it in one way for yourself for the rest of your life, the book of Ecclesiastes says, a human being is a golden bowl, a brain, a silver cord, a spinal cord with its connections, and the rest is just meat. And the rest is just meat. Now, how many of you, when you've dealt with fibromyalgia and given an antidepressant or heard that Ellaville worked, have thought to yourself, oh my God, the muscles of that patient the muscles are having a depression. In fact, I got a call from the guy's biceps just today. And his biceps said to me, I'm really blue lately. And my biceps, uh, as a bicep, it's a lonely life. And if I could just get that, and, my, and also I got a call from some thigh muscles. And if I could just get on some good antidepressants, that would be great. Or a guy, a patient of ours, named, who actually named a baby after one of our employees, came in and got Elevil for urticaria. He called me up and said, you know, I spoke to my skin today, and my skin is having a terrible event of blues. I feel great emotionally, but the skin feels really bad that it has to confront all these people on a daily basis. And so an antidepressant solving his urticaria rather than an endless dipping into steroid creams that his dermatologists were giving him. How many of you have thought, oh my God, how could an antidepressant or an anticonvulsant like...